The Narcissist Performance of One, Part One. The Narcissist World is a performance. When the Narcissist sits alone, there is no performance, for there is no audience. There is nobody that must be controlled, for in that instance there is nobody that sits or appears upon the narcissist's radar. They are not thinking of anybody. They might just be watching a film, a television show, or reading a book. But at that precise moment, they are with nobody, they are thinking of nobody, and therefore there is nobody to be controlled. No performance is necessary. They may well already be well fueled as a consequence of the interactions that they have had throughout the course of the day. And thus, those high fuel levels mean that the creature is silenced. The echoing catcalls of fragility and vulnerability have, for now, been silenced. Having drunk of copious amounts of fuel through proximate interaction from potent sources has meant fuel levels are high. Through the affliction of time, they will, of course, drop. But at this precise moment, not only is there nobody to control, there is no need to garner additional fuel. No performance is required. The construct is being held together by that fuel. No character traits are required at this juncture, nor residual benefits. The narcissist may already have accessed those residual benefits previously. The house that they are in may belong to somebody else. The money in the bank that they have received has been put there by another, or has been earned from their job. They have no need to access a network. There's no facade that needs to be managed. There is nobody there. And thus, that narcissist, on his or her own, has no need of providing a performance. There is no one to play to. And therefore, none of the prime aims are applicable. Yet, should somebody enter that room, should somebody send a text message that the narcissist sees upon their phone beside them, should the book that they are reading cause a memory to flare up inside their mind, then the performance cometh. An audience has appeared. And whether it is a person who has entered the room whether it is a person that has sent a text message or made a telephone call, or whether it is an individual who has appeared upon the narcissist's radar as a consequence of the evocation of a memory, now the performance of one must begin. The narcissist never sees people as individuals with feelings or needs or desires, motivations, aspirations, dreams or goals, we understand that you have them, but we do not see this, understand them fully, or care about them. Many narcissists that are of lesser and mid-range have an empty understanding of human beings. You only matter to the extent that you cater to the prime aims and thus you are seen purely in that one-dimensional way. Nothing else about you matters. All that matters is how you can be controlled, what fuel you can provide, what character traits can be purloined from you, what residual benefits can be commandeered. The unaware lesser and mid-range narcissist does not even think in such absolute terms of those prime aims. They are masked in other things. But if you were to peel it back underneath 
each thing that the narcissist would say and do in relation to that other person, it all comes back to the prime aims. The narcissist that says, I love you, only says that to make you feel good so that you're brought under control and that you respond by saying, I love you too, thus providing fuel. The narcissist does not love you. The narcissist is incapable of love, having no emotional empathy. But the performance has already begun. The performance of one has occurred for the purposes of causing you to believe that you are loved, and thus you come under control and provide that fuel. It might be that because you feel so special as a consequence of this, you engage in an act of sexual intimacy with the narcissist, thus continuing to show that you are under control, providing yet more fuel and also the residual benefit of the sensation of pleasure. But that is all that matters. We do not truly see another person at all. All we see is ourselves and our needs and our feelings. The only person that matters in all of this is us. Our entire life is a performance of one for one by us. That is what sits at the core of our relationship with you. And it is why the relationships do not work. We only understand you to the extent that it benefits us to understand how to control you and nullify those threats to control, to understand how to draw fuel from you, to understand how we can get those character traits and residual benefits from you. You serve our purposes. You are a washing machine, a toaster, a tin of beans. You do not exist or matter in any real way. Our performance is put on to ensure that you are controlled and manipulated and to prevent any control or manipulation of us, such as our level of paranoia about that happening to occur. This performance ensures that it is somebody else's fault, that it is somebody else's responsibility. Our performance demonstrating omnipotence is all about showing that we can control you and draw fuel from you. There are those who do not accept the idea that we see you as objects. They may well believe that people are important to us, and you are important to us, but not for the reason that many people believe. You are only important to us because you are objects that are there to be used for the purposes of our performance to get to the prime aims. Some people believe that we personally target you because you're oh so special. But you're not. There are millions of people who are alike in that regard. And although it is the empaths that are the ones that are targeted the most, there are, of course, millions. And the reasons why we target and put on this performance to ensnare you is governed by our pursuit of the empathic traits, the narcissistic traits, and the special traits, the class traits. I explain this in my book, Sitting Target. People like to think that sometimes that they are special, that that is why the narcissist was drawn to them, that the narcissist actually set out to hurt you and only you. But in actual fact, it is not. Because the only extent to which you matter is as a consequence of how you fulfill our aims. You are the equivalent of the washing machine. You are the equivalent of the hat that we put on. You could be anybody. You are all the same in the sense that you are there to be controlled, that you are there to provide us with fuel, that you are there to provide us with the character traits and residual benefits. You only matter in terms of giving us what we require and in essence making the narcissist feel better. The provision of your fuel, elicited by our performance for ourselves, drives down the feeling of emptiness, fills up to a degree the chasm causes the creature to become quiet. Your reaction, fuel, is what we require because of how it affects the way that a narcissist feels.
How that feels to you is only relevant with regard to how you manifest your feeling towards us. Whether you're hurt only matters as a consequence of our performance to hurt you because then your demonstration of your hurt is demonstration of our power over you. We do not care that you are hurt, only to the extent that it serves our needs. You are interpreted through the lens of how it affects us. You are a tool. A tool that is be, to be wielded to enable us to get to what we require. We view you as an object that through performance we can control, that we can use, that we can steal, that we can buy, that we can sell, and that we own. We do not recognise that you are an individual with your own needs, wants, feelings, beliefs, preferences, or anything else. For to do that, that would mean that we would have to have emotional empathy, and we do not have any. The unaware narcissist does not know that they don't actually care. The aware narcissist does know and is entirely comforted with that. Many narcissists do what they do over and over again without actually knowing why. It is instinctive, an automatic pilot whereby they engage in the same performances, repeating the same patterns and sequences and acting out the same scenes over and over again because it works. In some instances, you could ask those unaware narcissists why they have done something. And in some instances, in order to nullify the threat to control that is posed by what you have said, the narcissist will render a suggestion of an explanation. But it isn't the genuine reason why they have done it. They do not know that the performance that they have just given you is in the pursuit of the prime aims. In some instances, the narcissist doesn't even know themselves. And you will just be met with a shrug. People often think that narcissists have the capacity to understand the feelings and wants and needs and beliefs of others because that can be used against you to manipulate you or create certain responses in you. The fact is, that is the case. The narcissist must understand your feelings, your wants and your needs, not because we're genuinely interested in how that makes you feel, but because we need that response from you to tell us that you are under control. We have thus learned, either instinctively or consciously, which of your buttons to push to get what we want and to enable us to have that control and fuel from you. We are willing to engage in this behaviour, to get what we require, and a performance is key in so doing. The interested lover, the kindly old person, the compassionate individual, the forging leader at work, what Whatever performance is required, it will be delivered. The demonstration of importance and power, because you are sought as an audience to this performance, as an accessory. Your response makes us look a particular way, which gives us an acceptable image of who we are. This will provide us with what we require. Thus, where we control you as a consequence of being intimidating, then we will scare other individuals to receive that. If we can control through the use of intelligence, we will make other people look or feel stupid. It's about us and the performance that we put on. And we use other people as these objects, as the audience of our performance to get what we require. You, in the relationship with us, are simply a prop to ensure that our performance is believable. The entire performance is one for one by one. We perform. We do not involve ourselves with you. We do not ensure that we are there just for you. We are there to perform in front of you because that enables us to get what we require through this performance. We will inspire fear 
or or because that will create a reaction which validates our existence. Some narcissists will create an image that inspires pity or sympathy to create validation as a victim through that performance to a specific audience. The fact is that people are there to be milked for what we require, the control over you, the fuel over you, all part of that performance. And the only person we're truly performing for isn't actually you, as you might think, but it's simply for us. It is a performance of one for us.